the 15 minute or less lecture series anatomy chapter 12 the cardiovascular system blood the cardiovascular system includes the heart the blood vessels and the blood running in the blood vessels functions of blood include transportation it transports the gases oxygen from the lungs to the tissues carbon dioxide from the tissues to the lungs uh, nutrients and wastes heat hormones and electrolytes it's involved in regulation it helps to maintain the homeostasis the in all of the bodily fluids because nearly all the bodily fluids come from blood itself and it's involved in protection specifically to prevent both the excess loss of blood in the case of injuries aka blood clotting and as a immune response against pathogens uh, when you look at a person in total uh, the blood itself is about 8% of the total body weight. Break that down, you've got blood plasma, which is approximately 55% of the blood by volume, and then the formed elements, which is about 45% of the blood by volume. Looking at blood plasma, you see that most of it is water itself. Most of our blood plasma is water. Uh, there is also some uh, nutrients and waste products in the blood, but that is very little percentage overall. Also some electrolytes, gases, and so forth. Uh, the next largest thing beyond water is the proteins that are found in blood. There are three main categories of proteins. There is albumin. Albumin helps to contribute to the colloid osmotic pressure. That is important because it allows water to be drawn to the blood through the blood vessels specifically the capillaries when we are trying to do exchange with our tissues and it also contributes to the blood's the viscosity its thickness uh, there are the globulins uh, these includes the immunoglobulins which we know as antibodies as well as other globulins that are involved in transporting uh, hydrophobic nutrients such as lipids and then there's fibrinogen, which is important in blood clotting. The uh, formed elements are cells and cell-like structures. They include uh, erythrocytes, or red blood cells, which makes up the vast majority, and also white blood cells, or leukocytes, and platelets, or thrombocytes. Uh, turns out, 90, approximately 98.9% .9 of the formed elements are red blood cells. While 0.1% are the white blood cells or leukocytes, uh, which come in many different categories, including neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils, and then of course the platelets themselves. The term hematocrit refers to the percentage volume of blood that is made up of red blood cells, and that varies a little bit by gender, but it's somewhere between 42% to 47%. Uh, hemopoiesis is the generation of all blood cells and all blood cells are produced in the red bone marrow although some blood cells also differentiate in other places outside of the red bone marrow so the pluripotent stem cells are the stem cells in the red bone marrow that both produce themselves and are from which all blood cells originate if you look at it you can see that the pluripotent stem cells then break differentiate either into myeloid stem cells that can become uh, the erythrocytes the thrombocytes or many of the white blood cells, leukocytes, or it can differentiate into lymphoid stem cells that becomes the lymphocytes. Erythrocytes are the red blood cells. When they are mature, they lack most of their organelles. This is why they are a formed element, not a true cell in and of itself. So they lack uh, mitochondria, they lack nucleus, they lack the uh, Nephysic reticulum and Golgi apparatus. Instead, they are basically big bags of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a protein that can bind to oxygen. However, to bind to oxygen, hemoglobin needs the iron as a component of the protein. As you can see here, each hemoglobin is made up of four different strands, each with its own iron atom, and each can bind its own oxygen molecule. So one hemoglobin can bind to four oxygen molecules. So you get about a billion oxygens being carried in one red blood cell. Red blood cells, erythrocytes are red because of the hemoglobin. Uh, they can bind to and carry oxygen from the hemoglobin, but they also can bind to carbon dioxide at a different site. They are concave in shape, which increases the surface area about 30%. Uh, 
they depend on anaerobic respiration because again, no mitochondria. So you have to use and uh, make ATP without oxygen. And they live for about 120 days. And after that, they get removed from the bloodstream by spleen or the liver. Uh, the red blood cells, the erythrocytes, all have antigens on their surfaces. These include uh, A antigen and or B antigen. They might have both A and B antigens or none at all. And this is what we mean when we're talking about blood types is what antigens are on the red blood cells. Uh, there's also the row blood types, the plus and minus with the antigen D. So if you're plus, you have antigen D, and if you're minus, you lack it. Uh, so if we look here, we see that blood type A has antigen A and is producing antibodies against B. Uh, blood type B has antigen B and produces antibodies against A. Uh, antibody, antigen, uh, blood type AB has both A antigen and B antigen on red blood cells, so there's no antibodies against those. And blood type O lacks the antigens and instead produces antibodies against A and B. This is why if you give someone uh, blood that has the antigens that they do not possess on their own blood cells, that there will be a reaction that can be very dangerous. You gotta be careful with blood transfusions. Incorrect transfusions lead to agglutination. The antibodies that are present bind to the antigens on the foreign erythrocytes, causing agglutination, clumping up of the blood cells because of those antibodies. These clumps can then block blood vessels leading to strokes, heart attack, and even death. Uh, again, the rho blood types, if you're positive, you have the Rh antigen, or the antigen, and if you're negative, you lack the antigen and therefore have antibodies against Rh. So again, plus and minus can also be relevant when you're doing blood transfusions. Uh, disorders, anemia. Anemia is a reduced oxygen carrying capacity, often caused by uh, too few red blood cells. However, it could also be caused from not enough iron in the diet, therefore the hemoglobin would not be properly active. Uh, it leads to such symptoms as yellowing of the eyes, uh, pellets of the skin, shortness of breath, weakness, uh, rapid heart rate, dizziness, low blood pressure, all the way up to heart attack, fainting, and of course death. Uh, people with sickle cell anemia have a genetic disorder where their red blood cells are formed, uh, malformed into something that looks kind of like a sickle, I guess. And those red blood cells often rupture, and that's what causes many of the symptoms. Leukocytes, or white blood cells, can be broken down into granular leukocytes and agranular leukocytes. The granular leukocytes include eosinophil, basophil, and neutrophil, and they are these leukocytes, you can see little granules in their cytoplasm under a light microscope. With agranular leukocytes, lymphocytes and monocytes, you do not see those granules under a light microscope. And note, the white blood cells are basically translucent under a light microscope. So the reason why they look all these colors is because stains have been used to dye them. Uh, base fills, round, variable size. They have these large, large blue-purple granules that can even block so you can't see the nucleus, which is often too low. It's larger than the erythrocytes. Uh, normally, function is to release enzymes to intensify inflammation, but also involved in hypersensitivity reactions, aka allergic reactions. The eosinophils rather have uh, rather large reddish uh, orange granules uh, throughout the cytoplasm. They have a two or three lobe nucleus. They are larger than red blood cells. Uh, Normally, they release enzymes to counter inflammation, including in allergic reactions. They're also involved in destruction of parasitic uh, infections, such as worms, so they can break down, destroy worm infections, and they can be involved in some autoimmune diseases. Neutrophils have pale lilac colored granules scattered all throughout their cytoplasm. Their nucleus is often two to four lobes. Uh, larger than red blood cells, they function in general phagocytosis. So they will ingest bacteria and dead matter. Um, they are active in the blood and in various tissues. So they can leave the bloodstream. And they are, uh, when they engulf pathogens, they often destroy it with enzymes from their lysozymes or with strong oxidants in their lysozymes or with defensins, which are little proteins that poke holes into the microbe. Uh, monocytes. Monocytes have a blue grayish foamy uh, cytoplasm. They have a large nucleus, often kidney shaped or horseshoe shaped, larger than red blood cells. They are inactive in blood, but when they enter tissues, they differentiate into macrophages, which are then able to phagocytize microbes and cellular debris. 
Lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are about the same size as red blood cells. They have an extremely large nucleus, and their cytoplasm is sort of sky blue gray. There are different types of leukocytes, but you've got lymphocytes, but you can't tell the difference under a light microscope. They're important for specific immune response. B cells can differentiate into plasma cells and produce antibodies. T cells can control the immune response and even attack specific infected body cells. The T cells mature into thymus. That's where they get the T from in T cells. And natural killer cells destroy any sort of abnormal body cells. Leukemia is the cancer of the red bone marrow, causing it to produce non-functional white blood cells. Not only does this lead to too many non-functioning white blood cells, but it also prevents the production of other blood cells like erythrocytes. So it causes quite a few problems and eventually leads to death unless untreated. One treatment is to destroy the red bone marrow of some of the leukemia and then replace it with a healthy uh, red bone marrow from a donor and therefore allowing that, that new red bone marrow to produce all the blood cells for the recipient. Uh, thrombocytes. Thrombocytes actually end up as large megakaryocytes that release little bitty blobs that are the thrombocytes, the platelets. The thrombocytes are little bitty cells, blebbed off. They have no real organelles, just sort of disc shape, disc shape. They release chemicals uh, that help to promote blood clotting. So they initiate the clot process by um, causing fibrinogen to become fibrin, the active protein in forming blood clots. They also can clot to get, uh, group up together themselves, attached to the ends of damaged blood vessels and block the flow from those blood vessels, but that's only good for small blood vessels. And that is it for this lecture.